In this video, I'm going to continue my review on Android TV. So let's get to part two of this review. So, um, I will show you a game. Let's go to Meltdown here. Okay, so I had to turn down the sound on this because there's actual music playing here and I want to be able to talk over it. But this is one of the interesting things about Android TV. It has a game system built into it. Now, as you know, most of the world uses Android for their mobile phones. And Android has a lot of games on it. They're trying to actually leverage that onto your television set. Now, there's still a departure between this kind of gaming and what you're going to find on a console, on a modern console, like a, like a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. But it's nice to see gaming on a streaming media player like this. Now, Roku has some limited gaming, of course. Amazon Fire TV has gaming on it as well. Uh, you know, you can get some of these off-brand Android devices that actually put Android on your television set, where you can get the Android games on that as well. Uh, you can do that with an Ouya, but uh, it's never re really been mainstream yet. And that's going to be the interesting thing, because once, if not once, if this ever becomes mainstream where it's in a lot of television sets, people have a lot of these streaming media players that are Android TV devices, that's when you're going to see the better games on these devices. But as of right now, it's just basically an intermediate time for these games, and they're not as top-notch as you're going to find on a console. Apple has been reluctant to put gaming in their Apple TV device, which is questionable, but um, it's going to be interesting to observe this and see how this, if this takes off and how gaming is going to be leveraged on this device. But uh, this is really where you're going to see gaming either get a foothold or not. And that, in, down the line, will potentially be a threat to your modern consoles. So let me just uh, hit play on this. And uh, let's hit continue here, because I did play a, a level here. And I'm just going to show you what to expect on here. This is a very snappy device. It's running a Tegra 4 processor. And uh, you're going to find that uh, you know there's no hiccups or anything with this. So this is an isometric game. And uh, I was on an elevator there, and I'm getting off here. I just played this the other day, but I forget the controls. One, I have a gun, and I also have a, a knife on me here. So the trigger is the gun. Now, the thing about this is an auto-aim, which is interesting. So there's not a whole lot of skill. Again, you have to remember, a lot of these games are written for phones and tablets. And the difference between a gaming console and a phone or a tablet is actually the input. So for uh, a phone or a tablet, you can't have intricate uh, controls like you would with a, a, a console game with a, with a dedicated controller because you're actually just touching the screen. So you're going to have things like an auto-aim, which you wouldn't have on a console game. So again, that's going to be the differentiator. Right now, the majority of Android titles are meant for touch. But if something like the Android TV takes off, that's when you're going to see games written or even ported that require a games controller. So, you know, cool game, very smooth, pretty looking little isometric shooter here. And uh, I'm sure there's better games, not great games available right now. I'm mostly a survival horror type guy, but uh, I also play some first person shooters if I'm playing with friends. But I would love actually something like uh, uh, board games to be on this device. I could just picture, you know, people playing with their Android phones and tablets, or even just the game controller, or even the remote that comes with the consumer version of the of the uh, Android TV, which is the Nexus player. I'd love to see, you know, like family style games, maybe quiz show games or something like that on a television, because that would be probably the first step in my mind to for mass market adoption of Android TV as a gaming platform. I could picture games like Scrabble on there or games like Buzz, which is a, uh, a trivia type game. Those things would be awesome if they were on an Android TV device. And then you could get more like, you know, first person shooters and, and the like. 
But again, the audience has to be there, and right now the install base is in the phone and tablet market. And again, that is all touch screen based. So you're not going to see the very intricate games that you see on home consoles. So let's dump out of here. And I think the only one thing I do want to show you is the settings. And that's all the way down here, the cog at the bottom. So the settings on this device are very Android, but they don't look like the settings you'd find on an Android tablet or phone. You have your network settings, your Google Cast settings. Chromecast is baked into this device here. System sounds, you have your apps, so you can manage your apps here. Daydream is the screensaver that's on this device, and it tells the device when to go to sleep. Storage and reset, and then about the device. Again, the device name is the ADT-1 and it's running Android 5.0, which again is Lollipop. Let's just see if there's a system update here. The system's up to date. So let's dump out of here. Next selection here, you have your date and time, your language keyboard search, and then your speech settings and accessibility settings. And below that, you have your remote and accessories. You have your gamepad settings, and then you can also add an accessory. Now there's a selection below that, which is all your personal Gmail account that's associated with this device. And since I want to keep that private, I won't dive into that too much. But you can get into your location settings and whatnot down there. So let's dump back out of here, go back to the home. And as you see, when I've used something, it'll go to this main area up here. So I used Pandora, it's there. I've used the Food Network app, it's there. Um, these things are still suggested things that are put up here, but as you start to use things, it'll populate this area up here. And uh, as you see, I, I did dive into the Hulu Plus app, and now Hulu Plus suggestions are up here, even though I don't have a Hulu Plus account. But um, it'll give you a combination of things that you've used and things that you might want to use on this top section here. So let's dive into YouTube next here. So, as you can see on the left-hand side, you have some filters. What to watch, which are suggestions. Then you have my subscriptions, uploads, playlists, history. Then if you go down lower on the list here, you have channels that you're subscribed to, and then your settings. So basically, it's just trying to serve up YouTube videos to you that you might want to watch. Let's look up Tech Harvest. Now, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to put away or put down the gaming controller. And I'm actually going to pick up my tablet here, and we're going to go into the remote app for the ADT-1, or at least for Android TV. So here's the Android TV app on my tablet. Now this is a 7-inch tablet. Now interestingly enough, when the app first launched, it was only available for ARM tablets, and that's pretty much every mobile device, your cell phone, your tablets, they all run off of ARM processors. This one doesn't. This actually runs off of an Intel Medfield chip. So this is actually an Intel x86 based processor. So the app wasn't available until about two weeks ago for this system. So it's nice that it is available and I can actually control my Android TV device with my tablet and not have to break out my phone every time I want to use it. So as you can see, the remote is extremely simple. You have your mic button there. You hit that anytime you want to do a voice search. You have your virtual directional pad there with an OK button in the center. You have a back button and a home button. Very simple. That's pretty much all you need to navigate this device. Now the one thing you're going to get with the app that you're not going to get on the remote is a virtual keyboard. So you have some options up here. You see that it's connected to the ADT-1. I can select the keyboard little icon up there and it brings up my keyboard. So if I want, instead of using the voice search, I can type it in. And that comes in handy if you're doing a voice search and it's just not getting it right. Of course, I can get rid of the keyboard by clicking on that again. Now, if you don't like the directional, the virtual directional buttons, you can actually change that and you can change the layout over here. And you can go to a trackpad. Right now I have D-pad selected. I can go to a trackpad and as you see here, you have a little box where you can actually move around instead of using the, uh, the D-pad and then you just click it 
to select. Personally, I prefer the D-pad, but if you don't, you know, you have options here. Now, as you can see, on a tablet, it looks a little weird. It's just clicked over to the side there. It's not extra big. It's not filling it up. It's just kind of right over to the right there. Now, you can change the orientation on this, of course, and it's always over to the right there. It actually looks better in landscape like this. Now, again, it's early days for Android TV, but I would love if this unused real estate, again, you know, I'm using a tablet. I'm not using a phone here. So this would look a lot better on a phone than on a tablet like this. But it would be great if this unused real estate was your menu system. Basically your home screen on the, on the Android TV device itself. So instead of having to hit home here, you'd have your, basically your home screen over here. And let's say I'm watching Netflix and I'm, you know, I'm kind of tired of what I'm watching and I want to go to, you know, Google TV, Google Movies or Pandora or something. I could just hit the app over there you know, on a menu, potentially that would be over here, and just jump straight to it. That would be nice, but again, it's early days. Hopefully they, they embellish a little bit more on this app here. And let's just make sure it's working here. There we go. As you can hear, that clicking is coming from my app now instead of from the Android TV device. And I'm gonna hit the mic button, Tech Harvest. There we go. Look up Tech Harvest, and let's go to my welcome video here, which I always show because it's short and uh, it gives a good idea of the streaming capabilities of a device. And this is the only video I actually can show you because I'm not going to sue myself for copyright infringement. And I have full rights to use that music, by the way. So hopefully the volume isn't too loud, and let's dive into this. Very nice. Now, for some reason, it just dumps into the Tonight Show here, which I don't know how you correlate Tech Harvest to this, but somehow it is correlated to a 1989 episode of the Tonight Show. But the YouTube streaming works very nicely. It's nice to be able to watch YouTube videos on the television. So let me go to my channel here and let's pull up a video that I did recently, which might be a video on this device. All right, let's go to the playlist and bring it up. Android TV. All right, let me bring the sound down. In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of the Google Android TV ADT-1. Okay. The one thing I wanted to try on this is running a YouTube video and then hitting the home button and seeing what happens. So this is what I was trying to explain to you earlier. When you're in some of these properties, when you're in Pandora, when you're in Google TV or Google Movies, uh, you're going to see that if you dump back into the home menu, the whatever you were playing before, whether it's a music or, or the TV show or movie, will play in the background. And your menu will pop up in front of that. And then you can navigate that menu, as you hear me talking in the background on that video. You can navigate to something else and then jump into it. So there you go. I really like that functionality on this device. Let's just jump back to the home there. It gives you a sense that you're not jumping in an app, out of an app, to a home screen, and then into something else. It gives you a little more multitasking feeling on this device. So the one last thing I want to show you before we wrap this up is the casting, the Google casting on this. So again, I'm going to have to show you one of my videos, and I'll try not to do my welcome video. I'll try and pick something different this time. Probably that same video. I'm going to hit cast here, and I'm going to cast it to the ADT-1. And it's connecting, and there we go. So there we go. 
That is Google Casting on the Android TV device. Now, I'm just trying to determine the quality here. Seems pretty decent. Let me fast forward to an area where there's a little more motion going on when I've got the uh, box open. Sometimes I can get a little long-winded before I do, before I actually open a box, but let's take a look at this. Seems good. The streaming seems good on this. And it's very instantaneous. So let me hit play. And you'll be able to hear it on the tablet. Let me bring it a little closer. That clicking is me actually controlling my tablet here. So the controls are very instantaneous, not any noticeable lag at all. So let's jump back to the home screen here. Okay, I almost forgot. I did want to cover one last thing on this, and that's just the basic search. Now, with the Android TV app for your Android device, again, you cannot get it for iOS currently. The app is just Android only, but I would assume that there should be an iOS app shortly, if that's your thing. But the app has a QWERTY keyboard on it, or you could just use the voice search. Now, I just wanted to do a basic universal search on here and see what it pulls up. Game of Thrones. So as you can see here, it brings up Game of Thrones. And actually, let me turn this up a little bit. I had the sound down there. But it shows you Game of Thrones. It's available on Google Play, Movies and TV. And if I navigate through here, it'll show you the cast of Game of Thrones. And you can search through that. It gives you things that are associated with that search. So some of the other shows that are on HBO and a Netflix show there. And then you have the things that are linked to Game of Thrones, but on YouTube. So pretty much a Google Play experience or a Google property experience here. Let's actually go to one of the actors here and see what it brings up here. So it gives you a little synopsis about who she is. You can search for her on YouTube and then other movies that she's been in. And then on YouTube, you see things that involve her. And then you can go back to associated actors from Game of Thrones. Let's try another search. Survivor. Something a little more generic. I wanted to try just a word that also was a TV show. And you see Survivor there. It gives you a little synopsis of the show. And then it shows you, again, things that might be associated or, or might be of interest to you if you like Survivor. And then things associated with that on YouTube. So as you can see here, it's all entertainment related. On Google TV, if you did a search like that, you could actually do a web search for Survivor, meaning, you know, it's people who survived earthquakes and things like that. But this is all just very entertainment focused on this device. Let's bring it home here. Now that's pretty much everything that Android TV will offer you. Now again, what you're seeing right now is a developer unit running final software. This is the software that's going to be running on the consumer available Nexus player. So my opinion so far of Android TV is that it's a definite upgrade. As you can see, something just changed there on my recommendations. It kind of pulled in some things from YouTube now, actually, before I continue with what I'm saying, let's just take a look at that. So it gives me some recommendations from YouTube. Interesting. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, it's a definite upgrade from Google TV in my opinion. Google TV was a little bit of a mess, really was not something that consumers, the mass market, would be comfortable using. So I think this is a good direction for Google to go in leaving Google TV in the past. There's a lot of missteps that happened with that platform. And going forth with Android TV, Android itself is very liked. A lot of people like the brand. Now Google's actually doing Android television commercials. The majority of all mobile platforms in the world run on Android. 
I like the easy, very simple interface on this device. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. I like the transitions. It's a very capable device. You don't at any time feel that this is underpowered. All in all, I think it's a very good streamer. The only drawback at this point is that it's so early in the game. There's a handful of apps available. Fortunately, a lot of the very important apps are here. Netflix is huge. Hulu Plus is very good. Plex, a lot of people love that, even though it's not the full Plex app that you might be able to get on other platforms like Roku or Amazon Fire TV. It's still available. YouTube is big. The bases are covered, in other words. Again, I would like to see Amazon on here. I would like to see a Plex app that didn't require Plex Pass. I would like to see Voodoo on here. I'd like to see as many apps on here as possible. Time will tell if that will happen. So in closing, it's a very snappy device. It's got a lot of potential. If you're happy with what it offers right now, I would definitely say go out and buy one. If you're on the fence, definitely wait it out. Keep a close eye on what this device is going to offer within the next year or so. The Android TV platform has a lot of potential. Whether that potential is realized or not, time will tell. So if $100 is not a big deal for you, I'd say definitely jump on this. It's an excellent little device. If it's not quite there yet for your particular needs, it's not going to hurt to wait it out. So here's my ADT-1 Android TV device, and it's on top of my Blu-ray player, and to its immediate left is my Amazon Fire TV. Now the one thing that you'll notice about the ADT-1 is that it actually has a light under it. Now if you want to know a little bit more about what the box looks like in optimal lighting, not like it is right now, definitely check out my unboxing video. Now, in one of my previous videos, I was asked if this light does anything when you have music playing on the Android TV. In answer to that question, no, it doesn't. Right now, Google Music is not available on the Android TV device, so the light isn't going to do anything special when you play that because you're not playing Google Music on the device. But when you're playing something like Pandora, no, it doesn't do anything, it's just straight blue. But anyway, let me unplug this and plug it back in just so you can see the light show that it gives you when you turn it on, when you power it up. So I unplugged it, and let me plug it back in if I can find the port. So there's the light show, and once the device actually loads up, you just get that blue. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.